This is my um, 1891 white VS2B and sewing machine, and I love this machine. This was a treadle that my father had. It's an early white treadle with a small table, and um, it takes a larger machine in the actual treadle, so I had built this platform to sit on top of it for my machine to fit in it. I also have another uh, machine head just like this from 1888. But this is the 1891. And someone has requested that I um, show whether or not these types of machines will sew leather. And if you see any clutter in the background, you'll have to excuse me because I'm kind of working in close quarters today. Um, so I've threaded the machine. I've wound a bobbin. Um, this used to have a very pretty uh, decal painted um, decal in the center, which has worn away um, from 1891. You can't really expect too much. It's a little dusty, but it, it runs beautifully. It sews very well. And um, let me just show you how it does with leather. Now I have three things here. This is regular muslin, which is like a test cloth that I use to um, when I'm threading the machine to get it going, to get um, the bobbin thread to come up. This is a piece of leather that is about 1 16th of an inch thick. And this is a piece of suede that is much, um, it's about the same thickness, but it's much thinner. Um, in the sense where it's much more flexible, much softer, much more processed. This is a uh, stiff, um, I don't know, I, this is cowhide, this is sheepskin, and that might be the difference. They're, they're almost the same thickness. The black is a little bit thicker, but this is cowhide and this is sheepskin. So, I found something very interesting a moment ago. You'll see I was able to, uh, to sew through the cow hide, and I was able to sew through the sheepskin, but only in a double layer, which I found interesting. So let's start with the muslin. Now, uh, most white sewing machines, you have to turn the hand wheel toward the back of the machine. The early vibrating shuttle machines um, you turn the hand wheel toward you, toward the front of the machine. So I just want to show you how this sews. It has a type of presser feet that are, um, it has, I have a set of attachments for it, a set of feet that come off this area right here and you loosen this up and the foot comes off and you can change the feet that way but there's on muslin and then um, what I tried was the suede and again this is sheepskin and I had the grainier side the rougher side down when I did this. Now watch this. This is single layer sheepskin suede with the rough side down. And it goes right through it without a problem. But it won't hold a stitch. So I found that very interesting. And it has to be the way the, le uh, the leather works over the feed dogs. There's a whole row of holes where it went in, but it wasn't making a stitch. And that's when I realized it's too soft. Now, this sews all kinds of fabrics, so I've never run into something like that before with this machine. So I doubled the suede.
and I don't know if you could tell, but it moves a little bit faster over the feed dogs. Now that time, even doubled, it did not hold a stitch. So that for me is interesting because um, it doesn't make any sense to me why suede would not... Um, the needle is long enough to catch the bobbin thread and make a complete stitch. So it isn't that. It has to be something about the softness of the leather and the way it moves over the feed dogs. It could be the flexibility of it, but many fabrics are flexible like that. And this time it did the same thing. It kept a few stitches, but it skipped some on the right here, on your left, my right. So that you might have trouble with if you're sewing with suede and an antique machine like this. Now we'll do the heavy cowhide, which I use um, usually for thumb guards for carving. And before I started this video, I was thinking, you know, why would these machines be powerful enough to go through this leather? Because they were basically made as household machines. Um, the other video I have of sewing leather is the 1591 by Singer, which of course has a very strong motor, so it's not surprising it sews leather. There's my stitches right there. Sews it wonderfully. So I was pleasantly surprised that it sewed right through this and somewhat surprised that it wouldn't really sew through this without a problem. So can it sew through leather? Yes. Now, is it the, there's no motor on this machine. It's a treadle. So um, my belt, I have to relace the belt but it should hold um, through the video, I hope. And you can see, so here's the, the hand wheel turning. It's got a big flywheel. And there's the pedal. So this is average torque for a treadle machine. So now I'm going to put the camera on my feet because Glenn had asked if I would show barefoot treadling again. I have um, some bricks behind the machine because this is up on dollies. But I'm going to sew the same piece of black leather, and I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm standing up, so I'm just going to do this with one foot. And i got to get it going because I'm leaning back a little bit. And I actually have to hold onto the cabinet. That's all I'm doing to sew through this leather. And at the end there, I was going slow. But that's all I'm doing, to sew through this leather. So it's not, um, it's not very different from any other treadle that I've ever used. Maybe the Wheeler and Wilson that I used to have, because um, that was kind of a whole different machine. But let me see if I can put the camera down here. And if you can get a view, we'll see. That's about as good as I can put the camera, so I'm going to do the same thing. And the camera had stopped there by itself when I was uh, finishing up that treadling. So let me do this again. I'm going to try and put the camera down. This time I've gotten a stool and I'm going to sit down and do this with two feet on that same, uh, sewing the same black 
piece of cowhide. It's kind of challenging finding a place for the camera to, to be. Now let's hope it doesn't fall over. starting the uh, hand wheel toward me to get the, the treadle actually going. Now on this pedal, I can either do it like, like that with two feet, and what I'm running into is that the treadle is moving because it's on dollies. on a dolly. So I'm pushing against it with my feet, which makes it want to roll away. And of course, this is a short piece of fabric, so I don't have far to go once I get going. not taking any strength at all from my legs and um, very easy on my feet and all of that is sewing that right through that cowhide without a problem so that is my 1891 white VS2B sewing cowhide Much harder to do in both Dr. Scholl's and Claude's. Probably the way that your feet are held, both of those have wooden bottoms. It's harder to have one foot at the top and one at the bottom. It can be done. bottom right shoe is getting in the way. So I usually treadle with whatever I happen to have on at any given time, including if I've been out in the garden. The pressure is on my upper, my, my left upper foot, which is showing up on your right.
my normal boots, but usually they're laced up. of shoes, um, the ones that I don't have right here are my walking shoes that are kind of like sneakers. Those are really the most comfortable if you're not in your bare feet. 